It's wrinkled sheets. It's wrinkled sheets. It's really kind of neat. Listen to the wrinkled sheets. Yeah. Hello. Hello, everybody. And we're, we're back. We're back. We're, it's been a bit. It's been a month. You've been you've been traveling. I have been way over traveling. But Agreed. It, is, but... it is nice to be back. And we are coming at you live from the Wrinkled Sheet Studio and dedicated stereo sound. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're doing. This is stereo, people. If you don't know what stereo is, what year are you living in? So what's been going on with you? I'm just traveling like crazy. Have you been visiting anywhere exciting? Oh, you know what? I guess you're right. Yeah. Since the last time we did this, I went and spent uh, two weeks in, in uh, Barcelona. Uh-huh. And, uh, you were uh, down near South America? Well, that was last week I went yeah. to South America. I did Because I did Italy, mm-hmm. France. Um, was there somewhere else? I don't know. I wasn't there. Yeah. Oh, Aruba, uh, Aruba, Antigua. Uh, I just been, I've been traveling a lot, a lot. And Got then, it. And then tomorrow morning. Where are you going? You're taking me to the airport, and I'll be hitting the ships again for two weeks. Where are two, you going? Uh, somewhere in the Caribbean. I have oh, not. Okay. I have not looked at my itinerary. People ask me all the time. Mm-hmm. Where's Where's Steve going? I'm. I don't know. He doesn't tell me. People ask me that on the ships about, uh, they'll come up to me because they know they've seen me at the show. Because I do, mm-hmm. typically I do a welcome aboard show. It's the first night. So right. looking like I do, I stand out to people. And they'll be like, where are we going tomorrow? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be in my cabin. I'm going to, wherever where the ship is going, that's where I'm going. Because I, I don't really... Uh, Pay Look attention. at up, Don't pay attention. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's some guys like our friend Paul Ogata, who's another yes. comic on the ship. He plans out what he's going to do on the you know, Which next I, week. I think that's awesome. You you would prefer that something like that of knowing where you're going instead of just getting on yeah. and go. Yeah. Because then, like, maybe you go to the same place a ton uh-huh. because you're on a lot of the same Ships. routes. Yeah. Um, but maybe you, you do some research and you say, well, I want to go see this really old church this time. Or I want to go see this landmark this time. Well, that that sounds good in theory, and I really like that. I worked with a with a acapella group last week on the ship called uh, the, uh, the Edge Effect. Mm-hmm. I think I sent you one of yes, their videos. Yes, they and sounded they were, really, really good. I couldn't tell they were acapella. Really good. Well, they do every bit of the sounds. That's they, crazy. Th- Vocally, they play the guitar, mm-hmm. keyboard, bass. They sound like a Crazy. they sound like a band. They yes. sound exactly like a band. So I'm talking to them about the same thing that you and I are talking about. And one of the guy goes, "My wife says that to me all the time. Why don't you go do something?" He goes, "Would you just spend money in the middle of the day at your job?" I I You're- bought something off of Amazon today. So yes. What is? Is that something rolling in our? How no, is that a plane, a plane going over? Oh, okay. It just seems a bit closer that than normal. That seems really close, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. We're in our know, basement. You, we're in the basement. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I know it's not. Should thund- we be going to the bomb shelter? Wow. One of my coworkers built a, um, I don't know what it's called because I can't think of it right, but it's like a secure room in their basement where they store all their guns. They have some, like, a food. A bunker. Yeah. In case something were to happen. Are they a prepper? Are they into that kind of thing? Ish. Yeah. They just, they want to be able to have somewhere to go if the world goes crazy. Okay. If the world goes crazy and they go to this place, this bunker, which I know more and more people are are doing, Mm -hmm. uh, because I hear ads all the time for, uh, this food will last 25 years, so you'll never know when you're going to need this food that lasts 25 years. And I think... What are you going to do if it goes? <coughs> bless you, bless you. Uh-huh. If the world goes crazy, are you just going to sit down there for twenty five years? Maybe. You can't. You know what is the? What are you going to? I I understand because I grew up with with the Cold War. You know where people actually put like a war bunkers in yeah. their house, like the nuclear war. You could be down there. You, you've seen yes. like shows about that. And I thought, well, if the world is destroyed. What are you going to come up to? You know, wouldn't you, would you want to live like that? Or wouldn't you just like, I think I would just want to go out to just like, you want to come up to 
road warrior ish, where there's three or four people that have half melted faces that are still trying to eat people. Because wow. I don't know, but dang, you went dark. I know, but I don't know. I just thought it was cool they had a bunker. What was that movie? It was a movie with uh, uh, Dwight Yoakam was the bad guy. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And did we see it? I no, it was. Oh, it was, then I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what is the girl's name that was in Taxi Driver? And I don't know. You would know if I said her name. But like set like a safe room, it was something like that, with mm-hmm. them, where they go in, they can hit a button, and the wall closes, and you're in there with, with food. Because somebody breaks into your house. That's right. basically what that is, this kind of place. That would be good. Yeah, that you just run. It looks like a closet, but you hit a button, and, a, and you're locked in, and people yeah. can't get to you. I grab my butterfly and my cats and run in there. Now, you've got your gun now. Yes. Do, do you feel safer? I do. do Every do you, once in a while, noises happen, and I grab it. Really? And I walk around the house. Really? Yes. I think the cat knocked something down the other night. See, I haven't heard this. That's why I was wondering. Yes. Um, and we had just gotten back from camping, so my gun was still in its... In its uh, case? Case. Underneath the dresser, not loaded. And I was like, oh, no. And because I keep... a. Very, like, I know if it if it has a bullet chambered. I know, you know, I'm, yeah. like, it's a regular mental check I do. I'm like, where's my gun? Yeah. What is its status? So yeah. that I know what needs to happen. Part of me thinks keeping a bullet not chambered is a smart idea because mm-hmm. once they hear that, maybe they'll run away. Yeah. Okay. So the that other, makes, I mean, that, yeah. that makes sense, but I'll go ahead. I'll follow, I'm following. So the other night, I'm, I'm laying there in bed watching TV, and I hear this commotion, and I'm like, oh, my gun, it's not prepared. Somebody's breaking into the house. So I grab it, and I, I put the clip in, and I pull it back, and I walk around the house, and there's no one here. And I'm like, okay, cool, that's good. You <laughs> actually... Must have- must have been the cat. But you just walk around with it in your hand? Yeah. Or did you do did you do like in the movies where the with the no. double handed like you're clearing the house? Did you come around the edge of the stairs? That's not did how you... you do it. You could shoot yourself in the face doing that. No <laughs> if you're like No, there's actual ways to clear a house. Oh god. You know, See you've done those those. I took advanced. a class, yeah. Me, I just keep it pointed down at the ground uh-huh. and I I may say a couple times, I have a gun. I have a gun. You say it just like that? Yeah. I have a gun. <laughs> I have you. So I do feel safe. Yes. Back to your original question. I do feel safe. Okay. All right. Uh, now, you don't like to keep one in the chamber because you said the sound. <laughs> you hoping that works. But sometimes for self-protection, you just need to. It scares me to keep one in the chamber. Right. And I know a lot of people, this is the conversation I have with some people, because they're like, well, you're not supposed to keep a loaded, loaded gun in the house. You're not supposed to. What if somebody finds it or actually, well, everybody in the house should be well-educated. Right. Yeah. That, that should be well-educated. The handgun class that I took by a Denver SWAT mm-hmm. was the gun is supposed to stay unloaded until its intended use. Right. If the intended use is well, home, is to home have protection. The clip in. I want to have the bullets mm-hmm. in the gun. I just don't want it chambered. Right, but that's the way. I mean, that's the way you like. You feel safer that way. But I'm just saying for people that are always like, you're not supposed to have a loaded gun in the house. No, you for self protection. Yeah, you should have your loaded gun yes. in the house. And I'm not a fan of, and I will say it, of like locking your gun away because if somebody breaks into your house, yeah. If somebody's at the foot of your bed, are you going to go, hold on, where's my key? Right. Hold on, what drawer did we put the bullets in? What? Because right. there's people that do that. Like, the gun is over here, the the bullets are locked away in a safe. And like, yeah. what is the point? Right. No, I get that that's not something. And we don't have kids around. Like, we have kids that visit, and when they do, we put the guns away. away. Um, but we, yeah. But I understand when you have kids, because accidents happen because people don't lock their weapons away. And, and They have these nice safes that you can like do fingerprints and stuff, like small safes that you can keep next to yeah. your bed. But that's always something. I like the one, uh, I saw this thing the other day, that it's a looks like a picture frame that you hang above your bed. Mm-hmm. And when you hit it with your fingers... 
the bottom drops out and it's your 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 guns oh so you can and there's they have a shelf like that too that you you can hit the bottom of the shelf and the shelf opens up and yeah there's there's all these ways to hide and disguise the stuff now Especially for you ladies, y'all are getting more and more things that are purses and backpacks that are designed with right. holsters and stuff in them. It's so awesome. Have you thought about one I of have. those? Or I have, maybe one day. That uh, I just choose to stay home. I don't go anywhere. The show that we wa- started watching that we both like, Yellowstone. Oh yes, we we started last season. It's on season two. Two now, but la- where I was going with the gun, we'll talk about that after this. But the the gun, like last night, remember there was the, there was the fight, and the guy put the gun the gun in his back. Uh huh. That was that. That's the Derringer that I've been looking at. That oh. that uh, the snake killer thing. It's that. It's a. It's like a forty five and a four ten. Okay. And when he pulled it out, I was thinking that was that's the one, that's the one I want. The snake that's, slayer. Snake slayer. Yeah. It's tiny. Yeah, but it's really cool. And mm-hmm. I thought, that, that's the one right there. But that's a good show. That is a really good show. My boss um, watches it, and we were talking today because I work for a company that sells and, and makes explosives. explosives. And we have people employed by us that actually lay out the explosives in a quarry and push the button to make it go boom. And on the intro of Yellowstone, and I didn't quite catch it last year. It may not have been there. It may oh, have it, been there. That's the same intro. But I I wasn't as knowledgeable of my company last year. But, like, we were watching Yellowstone, and I was like, hey, rewind. That's a blast. Yeah, because it, it goes in a circle around the edge of the core. <laughs> like a controlled circle. Right. <laughs> Like outside of work, I'm pretty active on the Instagram and Facebook. But when I'm at work, I'm logged into LinkedIn all day, mm-hmm. and I try and stay connected to companies similar to ours. So I'm seeing blasts go off. You know how you see videos of cats on your Facebook? Uh-huh. I see videos of blasts. People post going, their blasts. We yes. had a really great blast today. Yes. Do and they it's really? Really cool. It's kind of like I don't know why I think it's soothing, but to just see the ground go up and fall down and. You know they're going to turn those big. They're turning those big rocks into little rocks so that it can be now, useful. Does your company, an explosives company, do they have a social media presence or do they oh, avoid yeah. something like that? Oh no, they do. They do. Yeah, they're an Australian-based company, uh-huh. so the U.S. is. I bet if they were U.S.-based, it wouldn't, because <laughs> different laws, different rules. Yeah, it's so funny when I speak to other people that do the same job I do. They're like, why don't you do a background check before you make an offer? And I was like. Oh, you can't do that in the U.S. You People don't know will the rules. sue you. <laughs> yeah, hmm. it's like trying the wine before you buy it. The rest of the world does that. Well, that's what people they a lot of times they'll ask me. Does your wife get to travel with you on these ships? And I go, I well, she can. She's allowed to, but she has a real job that she works for uh, an explosives company. And they're like, what? Isn't that cool to say? I work for an, anywhere I go. They're like, "What do you do?" I'm like, "I'm a recruiter for an explosives company." And people are like, "What?" I'm like, "I know it's cool." And I always tell them, "Yeah, she's got to be work with the ATF, and she's all this kind yeah. of." Stuff. So what? How is it for people that are listening and may not know? How do you work with the ATF? How did? How did? Because you had, you every, have to get approved by yes, them, right? Yes, I have a letter from the ATF saying I was approved. Um, every employee has to be approved. By the ATF. There's different levels, like the chemists and the engineers that are working with the explosives on a regular basis, they have a higher level. But because I work for Orica, I have to have ATF clearance. Like, uh, someone may have had a, a misdemeanor 10, 15 years ago, and most companies, that's okay, you know? Um, but if it's related to, like, drugs or, you know... Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms Agency, you yeah. know. You, well, how does that work in Colorado now where pot is legal? Where, do, where you fall under the federal guidelines. Yeah, but do people give you a hard time oh, when yeah. they come like, hey, it's legal here. So I, It's a, legal. I'm a recruiter, so I'm the, the gatekeeper of resumes. And so I'll talk to candidates long before a hiring manager will. And we're not, not in every state can you ask, have you ever been convicted? But we say, you know. As a part of a process, you have to go through a background check, physical, and drug screen. And I have had people go, well, that's not going to work for me. Well, bummer. Have a good day. Declined. Like immediately? Yes. Do they say it's not going to work for me because they don't want to take the drug screen or they uh, just it's know legal. they're going to? It's legal in Colorado. Well, that's cool. We fall under federal guidelines. 
There are some states. Well, that's I think, bullshit. I think Nevada just passed a, a law where um, employers aren't allowed to test for marijuana. That's crazy. You know, I it, bet that will. I bet that excludes driving positions because you don't want someone driving down the road with explosives well, that's you, high. Well, you don't want anybody doing anything high. Well, right. It, you know what? I, I know. It's it's one thing to go. Well, it's legal. Yeah, but do you want people driving an eighteen wheeler full of gasoline? Do you want an eighteen wheeler full of you know four thousand right. pounds coming down a mountain that's like just high as and f? You know. Then there's the argument, well, pot stays in your system for like up to 30 days. You you might use it, not be high when you're doing your job, but then test positive. It's a mess. I don't know why the U.S. and Canada are legalizing marijuana. It's safer than alcohol. That's cool. Except if you hear the other studies that are like, that like drug use at a young age affects the brain development of like... True. Like, okay, now... There's so, you know, there's so much, so, confu- so much. it's so confusing, you know. But we don't want to get down this boring path. Is boring. It, is it boring to talk about the drug laws? I don't know. I think so. Maybe not in entertainment. Maybe yeah. not. Well, just but well, I guess so. I, I was just thinking that there's so many people out there now that are doing it. More and more people are doing it. You know, mm-hmm. just it's socially acceptable. Yeah, and I I think the, even states where it's illegal, people they're are looking doing. the other way. Yeah, you know, adults have been like, "What's well, you know, everybody's doing it." Did we talk about the decriminalization of mushrooms? No, I know they're. Lo- did that pass here? Yes, it did pass. Yes. <gasps> oh, I was out. But people get confused, and it's not that they're legal; they're just decriminalized. If you get pulled over and find some mushrooms, what do they do? Probably nothing. Okay, so it's not. It's <laughs> not. It's, it's so confusing. They decriminalized it. But it's not legal. I think so. I googled what decriminalization, because people were like, oh, they made mushrooms legal. They're not legal. They're just decriminalized. They're talking about decriminalizing the people that come across the border, right? That's the word they keep using? Yeah. Yeah. Which I heard a great thing about that today. Uh, Uh Uh-oh. Did I open a can? Yeah, you did, sort of. It's not bad. But if if they're going to not check you when you cross the border, Mm -hmm. then why do we have to go through... uh, immigration when we come back on airplanes right if you're going to just make it where you can just come and go without any kind of knowledge of who you are or where you've been why do you waste our time having to come off a plane and go where have you been for the past six days i was in nassau bahamas on vacation you know right so what do you think about that i i don't think that that's like opening our borders that's just like opening all the gates people can come in and out but that's what all the unicorns want now. It's like the world should just be whoa, be open. Whoa, whoa, unicorns. Unicorns. Don't call those people unicorns. I like unicorns. You went to a unicorn festival. I did, and it was amazing. What actually is a unicorn festival, and how does one even hear about I didn't. I pay attention to the news and what's going on, and you'd go, you're the one that says, hey, I'm going to the Unicorn Festival in Denver. <laughs> How like, does one find out? How is this? Facebook, man. There's, a, I am subscribed to so many groups, Eventbrite, that tells me about like the Ramen Noodle Festival that is supposed to be coming in November. What? You know, I might have to go to that. The Bacon and Beer Festival, the Unicorn Festival. It. I am on that list. How many people, now you went to the Unicorn Festival. Mm-hmm. How many people... Would you say were there, or at least there oh. by the time period you were there? Oh. Were there hundreds, thousands? Yes. Maybe a thousand or more. Really? Yeah, it was a very big space, so it's hard for me to judge that. Uh-huh. And it was raining the day we went, so I think think the crowds were a little Was it a two-day event? Yes, Saturday and Sunday. It was so great. They had face paint, painting, they had glitter painting. They had all the Disney princesses were there taking pictures. They had Who food put this trucks. On? Oh, I don't know. The Unicorn Festival people. Is this a traveling thing? A unicorn no, festival goes city I, I to think city? It, it, they do it every year. They, last year was the first year. And I heard it was pretty chaotic. So people were like, oh, you're going to that shit show? And I was like, well, I am hoping, just like the Mac and Cheese Festival, I went the first year and it was a mess. But then I went to the second year, and they fixed a lot of things. And so it was great this year. Do people think they're unicorns? Is that why they go? 
I mean, maybe some is- of those people, yes. They're, I, I was planning on dressing up as a unicorn, but it was raining, so I didn't want to get my unicorn wig You bought wig a off. unicorn wig. Yes. So guess what I'm going to be for Halloween? A unicorn. Yay! Are you home for Halloween? I don't. Probably I not. don't know. I bet I'm, it's a negative. Is that a trigger. negative? Are you looking that up while we're recording? That's what oh, I do. That's what, that's what I do. Oh, you are home. Yay, so I could be a mermaid and you could be a unicorn. Yay. A merman. A merman. Merman. Yes. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of kids. All right. Wait, this just hit me. Explain this to me. What What is the thought process of... I'm a unicorn and I'm a mermaid because I I hear a lot about that now that people like you they're know, just magical. I'm the, I'm the mermaid or I'm the uh, in this life I'm a what 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 it's is just, it's weird. It is weird, isn't it? It's magical. It's just being fictitious. Like I saw somebody the other day posted something about uh, mermaid uh, living the saline life. You know, like mm. what. Yeah, I don't know. I got to meet Ariel the mermaid at the unicorn festival. Oh, you you did? Yeah. And was, two other mermaids. Was she out of the water? Was, yes. Oh, yes. She, so she, was, she had legs? No. Oh. She had a tail and she was beautiful. And what did you all talk about? Did you just take your picture? Or, did, she talked to Parker um, about, you know, her day and what she you was having be? fun. And it was very sweet. It was very sweet. Cinderella passed by, but we didn't get to meet her. And I was really Aww. sad because she's my favorite. I love Cinderella. You dressed up as Cinderella for a child party that one time. That was so much fun. If it if I did if I had if I owned my own costume, I may like be like, hey everyone, but probably past I'm past the age where it's probably acceptable to do that. Well maybe you could just be uh, like a Cinderella for parties. Maybe you could just yeah. get you the costume. And be like, hire me. Hi. I'm Ten available. Bucks. Ten bucks an hour. I come and I wave at your children. And I read them a book. Yeah. I'd be better than a drag queen book reading. <laughs> Wasn't that crazy? He was hilarious. He was sassy. They had a drag queen reading kids' books. And it was a book about um, a child that had questions about its, its his sexuality. sexuality. I'm shocked. <laughs> I was like, wow, these did not exist when I was a kid. But it was it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. The adults were laughing, and the kids were like, "Who? <laughs> what?" It is a little weird. It is. Let's, let's be honest. It is. I I was like, "Whoa!" But he looked great. He had pink hair. You know, I just it's weird to me to go that young. I I think anybody should be able to do whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and it the wasn't kids probably don't realize. But they, that opens the door to the kids. Right. They have they realize something. Mm-hmm. Why does Ariel the mermaid have a mustache? You know what I mean? There's there's oh, things Ariel did not. Well, don't you, say you know, like you know that. my point. Yes. You know, why why does why does uh, our fairy reading the book have a 5 day shadow? But right. but the point being, it used to be you just did those things when you were an adult. Mm-hmm. You kind of had your, you know, you grew up and that was what your your lifestyle or right. whatever. You, or you did it behind at parties and things. Mm-hmm. And now it just seems like it's gotten younger and younger and younger. And we were all like, oh, whatever. It was kind of fun. Oh, you know, it was kind of. What am I going to do? No, but I know. But I'm <sighs> saying. I almost didn't send you that picture. I know. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's my point. I don't care. There's things that I don't care about adults, about do whatever you want to do as an adult. I've never been that way. But I just think when you start involving kids, it gets weird. It does. It just gets weird. It does. But maybe it makes them a little bit more open to that when they get older. Yeah, but part of it is it confuses you. Because I think, you know, if you know child development, there is a development period. There's, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think when you think, what what am I? What am I, you know, maybe boys don't like me. Maybe I don't like boys. You know, maybe I'm too ugly. But if I, there's all all the stuff that goes on in people's heads. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be like, well, you can choose this. Right. You know, you can lean this way. Right. And I'm not saying people choose that. I'm just saying that experimenting. It does get weird. Confusing, yes. Okay. Okay. I know you. I, you shut down on me because you always do. Like I'm not saying anything. I'm not gonna say one word. I'm not gonna. This isn't political. This 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 podcast isn't about that. This isn't. 
Are you making fun of me? Cool. <laughs> cool. You know, both of the podcasts I'm on, I, I keep it very light and fluffy. I like light and fluffy. That is how I live my life. And you know that about me. You've known that about me since we first started dating. I know. And I've listened to, when I listen to uh, one of your other podcasts, Two Girls and a Bottle of Wine, I can tell when they get to talking and you get quiet. Mm-hmm. But that's okay. That's why we have three of us. And it's great. It's great. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. <sighs> so we, uh, I'll, 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 switch, I'll switch subjects on you. So we just finished shooting some videos uh, for a thing we do, trying stuff. Steve and Janet, trying stuff. Mm -hmm. And we shot a thing for keto coffee. Yeah, from Bang, which we really like the Bang drinks. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a big fan of it. I love the Bang drinks. Cotton candy. Cotton candy. Rainbow. Love them. Even the rosé is okay. Unicorn Rainbow. That's the Mm -hmm. name of that one. Unicorn Rainbow. Mm -hmm. Now, we've been doing keto for a while now. I've been doing it six months. How long have you been doing five. it? Five. Five. Um, I, I actually hit 30 pounds loss. I, I got so excited. I hit it. And now I'm back up three pounds mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. But look, it's like so weird. I'm making uh, three pounds. Uh. I have been noticing, this is going to, more and more hair loss. I think I've heard that's a side effect. It is. I Googled. Because uh-huh. I noticed it in the laundry when I was folding laundry, I'm like noticing ha- like hair in the dryer. Like, why is it? I've been noticing a little more. So I Googled, and that is a thing. <laughs> no. That is, you know. <laughs> oh, but you're you have hair on your arms. Yeah, I don't need it there. <laughs> I don't need it there. I I paid money to have it put back on my head. Uh oh. So so are we done with keto? I don't I don't know I don't think so but I'm worried about it so I'm gonna. Did you research as to how to counteract the hair loss? Is there? There's some there there's some stories that I I emailed I haven't read them I emailed myself of uh, home remedies to keto hair loss or uh, you know is one of them was is keto hair loss a real thing and one of them was like sad to say yes it is. Because it's a change in your diet. It's a yeah. change in your metabolism. It's a cha- Have you noted, noticed no. any for you? Mm-mm. But I haven't noticed the weight loss either. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gained weight, which there for the last few years I've been in a steady increase. I maybe lost three pounds. Really? Mm-hmm. How do I, under- I don't understand. I don't either because I work out a hell of a lot more than you. You do? Like 100% yeah. more than you. Do you think you're not hitting ketosis? Maybe. Or- uh. I'm I'm happier with my body. Like I feel better. Mm-hmm. I'm not a stick. I'm not gonna. Well, I'm not like stick thin, but I'm happy. Like I feel like my clothes fit a little bit better. Okay. But you you don't think I look good? Yeah, I think you look great. You, no, you don't. I'm just shutting down. No, I got it. <laughs> That's because he doesn't want to answer the question truthfully. I got no, you. No, I think you look great. Your workout has been paying off a lot. Thank I can you. tell the difference in, in your. I'm sore. You're. S- I'm sore. Cycle AF. biking, or cycle bar. Cycle biking because you get up at three a.m. to go ride a bicycle three times a week, and then two times a week we have an, an in-house trainer that comes in to work, and she's the one that makes me really sore. Oh my gosh. Did you look into this before you did cycle? Did you, did you check out other people? Did you ask them, how does this work for you? Or did you just one day go, I'm doing this class? No, one of my friends, um, she was like, Janet, you need to try Cycle Bar with me. It, I think you'll like it. I was like, cool. First one's free. Cool. Coming in. It's like drugs. <laughs> first one's free. Are yeah. you hooked yet? And then you can sign up for five. But then after the first time you sign up for five, you can't sign up for five again. Now I'm on the unlimited plan. What'd that cost you? It's like $150 a month. But I signed Jesus up. Christ. I know. That's that's I know. That's almost ridiculous. I know. Can you just buy the buy one of the bikes and put it in the house? <laughs> it's not the same. Huh? Can't you get one of those Pendleton bikes or whatever? I would thing rather is? skip a concert or two than I really like Cycle Bar. Okay. I really Psycho do. Bar. I send you my stats every morning. Every morning. I came in second one day this week out of fifteen people. What happens if you hit number one? Do lights and bells go off or any of that no, kind of stuff? Do no. the teachers, a, they go, good job! Or? The only way you find out is by that email, and it, it's sent to us after we finish class. Now, do you have a one of those people, like in the movies, and like, keep going, push harder, five more minutes? Yes, what we do, have an instructor. What do they, what, how do they instruct you to pedal? 
They <laughs> they let you know because there's resistance on the bikes. Uh huh. They'll tell you if if you need to focus on pedaling faster with a lower resistance, or mm-hmm. hey, pump that resistance up to ten, or s- you stand up on the bike and you pedal, or you sit down on the bike and pedal. They also do like arm exercises. We have this bar where we do. Um, it's either a four pound or six pound where we do arm exercises for a full song, and they guide us through all of that. Oh. Does anybody ever get hurt, like in that never, in that Amy Schumer movie where your no, foot slides I, off and you go flying off your bicycle? No, no, that's not realistic. <laughs> Good, because I didn't think it was realistic in the movie. <laughs> no, but I but I, I just didn't fun. know if that's one of those things because you do you lock in your feet like yes, they do in the they're movie? They're locked. They're locked in. Yes. So do you ever feel like you get a weird like get out of sync every once in a while? Or? No. No. Because no. I do that on the, when you do, what? I'm at the gym doing the, uh, what do they call the elliptical? Mm-hmm. That everyone, you don't do the elliptical. No, because I, that freaks me out because I'll get in that, you know, it keeps going and sometimes you're like, whoa, almost, I got slightly off and it, it almost threw me off. You never feel like, the, when you're doing the elliptical, your arms are going, your feet are going. Do you never feel like no, your, your weight just, shifted just slightly wrong and it didn't, no? I think you're I go into a like, mindless state. I watch YouTube. Oh. That's why I like riding the bike. Right. I, I do. I to me. But pe- you pedaling, don't really. You're intense. I've watched you ride the bike. Yeah. I look at my number. My number says keep it above this. Ah. Uh, you know that's what heart rate above the weight loss. Keep it above. And I'll I'll keep my eye on that and I watch TV or I'll read something on my phone. But I'm keeping it right above where it says I need to be. I'm not in that in that. <sighs> I'm in the zone. I'm in the. <sighs> I pushed it to 16 on the resistance today. That's the highest I've ever been. What does that do? 16? It hurts. It, it just feels like you're climbing a mountain with your bike. Well, you, you're saying, you've been telling me now my back hurts from doing this. No, I don't think it was from doing that. Okay, but you told me that. You Because that, that's my, my... what I was thinking. I'm like, why is my back hurt? It must be cycle bar. But I think it's because I was sleeping on my stomach. Because I changed my sleeping patterns uh-huh. and my back is healing. Oh, because with, with your boobs and that sleeping on your stomach... That's probably got a weird arch to your back. I don't have boobs. Okay, then that, that's probably not it. <laughs> Jerk face. <laughs> My friends that do have boobs, they're always like, how do you sleep on your stomach? And I'm like, A cup, what? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but one of my coworkers gave me a book um, about backs today, um, so I'm going to read that this weekend. About backs, yeah, back like, health kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because she heard me talk. She's like, Janet, you were talking about your back hurting last week. I was like, Yeah, it's getting better. It's not 100, percent but I'm sleeping like a taco, and things seem to be going well. I bought that book the other day. Uh, what book? The one that's up there. The how to how to un. Unf your life, yeah. Or unf yourself, or whatever it is, yeah, ha- yeah. The, there is. Uh, I was watching the other day on on Fox News an author who wrote another book, sort of like that. Mm-hmm. It has the f word in it, and they kept saying how to bleep your. But you're showing the book cover, right? On the, on the thing, but that seems to be a trend. Like there's been several. Yeah, the art of several, not giving an f. F is one of them, and how to unfuck your life, and all you know, all this kind of. There's a is that. That's a little weird to me, you know. <laughs> right. I, you know, I know I do stand up and I I do adult. You use you, the F I word. use the F, but I just think there's time and a place. I just think that's one time. You know, that maybe it's not acceptable. Acceptable, but I bought the book. But you did. But Why did same, you buy the book? Because I heard it was good. You know, one of those deals. But are we just getting? Are we getting more and more lax on things that we just don't? Like society has just become more and more like, oh, I don't care about that. That doesn't bother me. I'm going to let that one go too. Yeah, I you think know? so. It's probably bad. It's very bad. It's very bad. You know? There seems like there'd be a more creative way to say, you know, to have a title other than just how to unf your life. But it draws attention. Right. No, that's true. That is true. You know what drives me nuts is when you post photos of me and you don't tag me. I tagged you. You, I Facebook just said Steve McGrew posted these three photos. It might be you. Was it you? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, that was the one for wrinkled sheets. Yes. So. Oh, I tagged you in the other one about your hair. Yeah. Do you like my hair? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't cut it. I know. You're doing beachy waves. 
But you don't like it. I do. I told you I liked it when you did it. But the year was not teasing. convincing. I'm teasing. You bought a special roller, an eighty dollar roller, and yeah. After um, shipping and handling, it was about one hundred and twenty. Was it really? Yeah, with taxes, Overstock dot com gets you like that. I thought it was well. It was like eighty. Oh, and could you send me a? Can I have this for my birthday? Yeah, I got my birthday gift already. It's a. It's the best curling iron ever. You don't have to. You're not going to be home. You've already given me my birthday gift. Happy birthday! Hey. Well, I'm going to see Miranda. You're going to go see Billy Ray Cyrus. I am going to take my horse Hold down the old, old town road. road. I'm going to ride to the. Yeah. I hate that song. I know. Should I do a vlog of my Billy Ray Cyrus box before I go to the Billy Ray Cyrus concert? Of course. <laughs> How, how many days ahead are you going to start listening to Billy? Are you oh, already, already doing it now, have. aren't you? <laughs> yes. I've been listening to all his songs. Now, he put out an album after this song. Yeah, and but it, his new sound is not... It flopped, right? It's not... It's really hard to get into his new sound. It's an acid trip. It's a little druggy, I think, maybe, is what you mean. It just sounds a little too. I you don't played know. me one song one time that he and Miley did that actually just sounded like sound effects and noises and bird <laughs> whistles and dog farts and stuff. Whatever. Remember that song? I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. It was a Billy Ray song that they had done together. You played me the album. It was oh. some, and it was just like this weird, it, weird. So the name of his new new album is the Snake Doctor Circus. Snake Doctor Circus. Okay. Yeah. That's drug induced. I know. I'm gonna try and get this one song going. Just I like see like typically it's about fifty seconds in. Doesn't that sound trippy? What do you think? It sounds like one of those uh, Texas Hippie Coalition kind of uh, jam bandy kind of things. It's called that you could Guns, be... Gold, and Guitars. Is that your favorite song on the album or your least favorite? I haven't really... He has a song on here I haven't listened to. It's called Take It Easy, Greasy. And it's featuring Don Von Tress, who wrote Achy Breaky Heart. Oh. Did you know that about Don Von Tress? Yeah. Well, remember we met him. Oh, we did! We were on... Uh, where were we? We were on the tour no, bus. No, the guy we met wrote Words by Heart, no, not Achy Breaky Heart. No, remember he said, I said that BMA music told me to keep writing because one Achy Breaky Heart and you're set for life. And he goes, that's not true. And the guy was on the bus. It wasn't Don Von Tress. I would have remembered this. Really? Yes. Don Von Tress is a name that is like in my brain. He, he had written a couple We were on James songs. Isles. It was James yes. Isles' bus, and he had said... It wasn't Don Von Tress. Okay, I mean, I could see... Because he was like, I wrote for... Mm -hmm. uh, I thought he said he wrote that for... He wrote Words by Heart. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, I have a, a silly obsession with Billy Ray Cyrus. I was talking to one of the, my coworkers. She's 24. Mm -hmm. She She's, has no idea who he is? No. Of course. It's Miley's dad. Um, and she went to the Grizzly Rose for the first time last Thursday night for ladies night. And she's like, I can't. And she's from Canada. She's like, I can't believe drinks are free um, for ladies. And I was like, yeah, yeah. That's sexist. The Grizzly Rose. Shut up. That's so sexist. Stop. I thought we were past that in this day and age. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to see Billy Ray Cyrus on the 5th. And she's like, that's awesome. Miley's dad. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Billy Ray. I remember when Miley was born. Destiny Hope Cyrus. And then she became Miley. But Smiley. Smiley, then she changed it to Miley. I know the story. I know you told it to me. <laughs> but yes, I am going to see Billy Ray next Friday. You'll be the tallest person in the audience. I'm hoping. I'm in GA Pit. You saw him before and you said you were the only adult. But that was at Elitch's. That was at the, <laughs> the theme park where kids go to play. I'm afraid with this Old Town Road success that it's going to be a madhouse. Is he still looking all like, like Grungy? the like the that creature from Jeepers Creepers? Does he have still have that hat over his head? And yeah, he performed on the BET Awards. Looking like that, like the yes, Jeepers and Creepers guy. Yes, they loved it. Really? Yes, that like all the 
BET attendees were singing along. Well, they know that song because it's, it's a rap song. It's not a country song. Right. I agree with that statement. No, it is a rap song. That's what on the music charts. It's in the rap charts. But it's also being on played the country on country charts. Yeah, but that that was the big fight that was going on about that it was a rap song and classify it as a rap song. And people were like, "Well, it's not being accepted by the country music world." Though well, it's being played, it's not being accepted. Little it's Nas X released it on its own without Billy Ray, and they rejected it. They added Billy Ray, and then they didn't reject it as hard. As hard. <laughs> is what I heard. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to see Billy Ray this month. I'm also going to see Miranda. I thought you were past that. Past Where what? Where are you going to go see Miranda? At Cheyenne Frontier Days. That's a, they got such a long drive. Yeah. Me and Monica. Monica is coming into town. Uh-huh. And me and Butterfly and Monica are heading up to Cheyenne for... We're staying two nights and three days. Really? Yes. Who's going to watch the diabetic cat and the shots? I need to ask your uh, your daughter-in-law. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm just finding out about this. This is. I'm pretty sure I told you. No, you hadn't told me yet. Yeah. You said y'all talked about it, but it wasn't definite. So you are definitely going to. Oh, yep. That's the Jeepers Creepers look. I've never been look. to the rodeo. And Monica's all about wanting to find a cowboy. So... We're going to Miranda on Wednesday night, Rodeo on Thursday night, coming home on Friday, and then Saturday is my birthday, and we're going to see Reckless Kelly at the Grizzly Rose. Oh, my. It's loaded. It's a loaded weekend. I'm so exhausted just telling you about it. 38. 38. It's your 38 special. Oh, my God. That is so (laughs) clever. 38 special. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) That's like the gun I carry. Yeah. Yeah. It's the thirty-eight special. <laughs> I'm your. I'm the gun. You're my. You're my. Hotter than a two-dollar pistol. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So. So who's Reckless Kelly? They're a Texas band. I know that. Okay. I'm like the only reason we're going is because it's a concert at the Grizzly Rose on my birthday. I have. I'm late coming to the party on on some of this stuff because, uh, I. I don't like new country as if we talked on this before, but I have recently been turned on to uh, because of the movie The Dead Don't Die. Sturgill. Sturgill Sim- uh, Simpson. Mm-hmm. And uh, I realized he has a pretty good voice. Mm-hmm. Like I liked the song, which is the theme song to the movie The Dead Don't Die. So I Googled it and then I listened to him with John Prine and a couple other songs. And uh, I. I got to give him a a thumbs up. I know there's people. That's that, funny. Hmm. That's funny. Really? That's, yeah. I'm surprised. And there's a new another kid that I just discovered that I put on my Facebook. Um, and I, I can't remember. Is it Johnny Strings or something? Strings. I, don't know. I posted on my Facebook uh-huh. a while back. But it's another another kid. It's bluegrass. But oh. the kid is really really good. How old is he? Uh, he's young. Like and he's teens okay all right are you on it right there can you look it up real quick i am not what are you doing i'm trying to pull up something i'm trying to understand something (laughs) what are you trying to understand help us it was it was sturgill simpson he um i think it was two years ago at the cmas he stood outside played his guitar on the street because he was like being semi-protesting that he wasn't accepted by the yeah. yeah, I don't think even if they accepted him, he would be okay yeah. with it. All right, look up. I, I am. Okay. I'm pulling up your page. No, you won't find it on the page. Let's go to YouTube. Oh, okay. It's been several several days ago. Go to YouTube. You got YouTube? Yes. Okay, type in strings, bluegrass. Strings, bluegrass. Do you want to spell it for me? What? Just in case. No, you know okay. it. I know. You're being mean to me now. What is that about? <laughs> God. You're people being listen, bossy. People listening to us are just like, wow. Billy Strings. I, Billy meet, Strings. Meet me at the creek. Yeah. Billy Str- Young kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's he play? Guitar. They're like a... He's like a... More talented Zach Brown kind of jam jam banish. 
<laughs> that looks like it's in, in Nashville. Music City Roots. Cool. Yeah. I'll have to check him out. Yeah. There, he and another guy did a cover of uh, a Merle Haggard song. Mm-hmm. And I was like, kind of like, mind blown. <laughs> so I, I, that's how, do you do that? You discover something, like one song, and then you go down the, the rabbit hole of what else have they done? Who else have they played with? Oh, look, he's he actually played background with this guy on one song. And I do, not as much. I think um, your lack of enthusiasm for new country mm-hmm. has kind of halted me listening to music. Period. I listen to podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. A lot. A lot of podcasts. I'm into the crime. That's where I was going to go with this. You are, I was talking to somebody else. What, as a matter of fact, I think it was one of the guys in the Edge Effect who we were talking about earlier. His wife listens to the crime podcast and scares herself. And yep. I go, that's what Janet is doing. Yep. You, like, she, she went to get her car keys out of the car and was never seen again. She carried the groceries into the house. Uh, that was the last time anybody had ever. So played. I was at the Unicorn Festival. I turned to Amber and I was like, Amber, this would be like the ultimate place for a murder to happen. Because <laughs> like dress up as a unicorn and you start stabbing people. <laughs> I know. So bad. Um, yeah, I'm listening to Southern Fried, Southern Fried True Crime recently. That's a good one. Moms and Murder. Moms and Murder was one you and I listened yeah. to, right? That, that was pretty good. That, those are the ones that tell the stories about crime, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They just kind of pick a crime. This and, happened. This is yeah. the outcome. And then yes. you've. Made me listen to, not force me. I made but, you. But what was the ones like the, the investigative reporter? They're the ones that are actually trying to solve the crimes. Right. Which the, one was that? It that was, was on our really, way back. That was really good. Uh, it was. And she not was like, that that's one. all I have so far. I'm going to stay on this case. Helen Gone. Helen Gone, yeah. And then A Killing on the Cape is the last one we watched where the trash man got convicted. Yeah. What happened on that one? He got convicted, and they don't think... They talked about all the stuff that shows he didn't do it, but that's how it ended. And that's the thing with some of those. You you spend nine episodes listening, and then there's no No final, And it's like, really? But it's kind of like people are rediscovering radio. Unsolved mysteries. Well, oh, it, but radio, not, no, 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 like r- the old time radio. Cause Where they you do, sit around and listen to stories. Yes, like th- they do sound effects, you know, mm-hmm. like, and then they open the uh, the basement door. <laughs> you know, like they have this, like the old days when somebody go, and they broke their arm, <laughs> and they break a carrot stick, you know, oh, <laughs> you ah. know just the, for the sound effects. Yes. But they're doing, people are listening again to, mm-hmm. s- it's like story time. right. One that I I listened to recently and I totally recommend anyone is called To Live and Die in L.A. Oh, probably the best one. It's one of the multi-episode ones, but it, yes. How do you think when they're putting these together, because a lot of times they'll, they'll have part of the story and then it's like, but we'll talk more about that later. And they'll, or they'll come back and go, this person was the gardener that we mentioned in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you how do you think do you think they're put together as puzzles, or they're written to be broken up like that? Or I think it keeps you intrigued. Or do you discover it keeps you? It's like a web that you get woven into, and you're like, oh yeah, okay, oh got to go back to oh my. Remember when this person Ooh. was interviewed at the first? Because uh, if you yeah. keep it linear, like the one episode. Crime podcast. I I do enjoy those if it's if it's done well, but the multi episode ones. If you keep it linear like the others, uh-huh. you're gonna lose people because it's too. Because I have listened to linear multi episode ones and I'm like, nope, no. I tried to get into the history podcasts because mm-hmm. history was my least favorite topic. So. I don't remember a lot. I got enough to get by. I, I passed the classes with A's and B's, but I didn't retain it. Uh-huh. And I'm uh, now I'm like, crap, I wish I knew more about history. I kind of do. But I try and listen to history podcasts, and it's like snooze fest. Maybe that's just a bad person doing they that. They need to have like someone really like exciting well, presenting a history podcast. You should be talking about the first man on the moon. We were, we were the other night. What was the show? Oh, it was, it was uh, Yellowstone. Yeah, where the girl was talking because she's going to be teaching American Indian history or whatever. And my history teacher in college, uh, 
he used to dress up. Oh, that would be fun. He would dress up like uh, as a pilgrim or, mm-hmm. or whatever, or, or he would have on a headdress, which would be horrible now. You know, in this day and age, you couldn't oh, be. A, you couldn't just totally, throw on a, a headdress. A but he would do stuff like that and keep the like a story tell, like would tell the story of right. of history. And that's why last night I turned to you and went, I took college history, and yet I didn't come out angry. I didn't have this. Teacher, like, I will tell you the truth of what happened with Columbus and how he destroyed the Native Americans of, you know, I mean, we got the story. Right. We, we knew what was going on. He came, he conquered, you know, they brought the people and they conquered. But you didn't have to be like, and then they destroyed the civilizations and to stole their land. And I, I don't understand the, the anger and negativity that's going on in history classes now. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I do. I, I there. It used to just. It felt like it used to just be. This is history. No judgments. Right. You need to know history. You should know yes. this is what happened. This is how it went down. And you need to know history because they always say history repeats itself. Right. So, and I think a lot of people don't know history, and that's why they're kind of. I just like, told you I don't. <laughs> but you took the class. I, did. I think a lot of people just don't take the class or don't pay attention. I'm not even sure they teach how they teach it in this day and age anymore. Well, you know, math is jacked. Right, Common Core. Do they still do that? I don't know. I think so. I think until it's completely done away with. I, I've actually said several times on Facebook and Twitter that I think public schools need to be like like a, a job that you just clear it out, start over. Like yeah. the things have gotten so bad, so so horrible. They're passing people that can't read. They're passing people that can't do math. They're just no child left behind. Some people need to be left behind. It's true. Or four or five classes back. How do how do we make it for all these years? When well, I I, I failed the fifth grade, but I caught up by the ninth. You know, there's yeah. Um, it's really sad and scary because you know I again I'm a recruiter. So I mm-hmm. hire people. I talk to people at all different levels. And some of those lower level employees, you're like, how? How have you not progressed? Like, I'm sorry. I don't know how to check my email on my phone. I'll have to get back to my computer. How do you not know that? Right? Yeah. But you you take for granted the fact that we have been exposed. And these are maybe in smaller towns. And it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, though. <laughs> what's wrong with this? Okay, let me ask you. What's wrong with this rabbit hole? It makes me sad. But we have to discuss these things. But I feel like they did that. Like, back in the day, I know someone that is older than you that was passed through school with disabilities just to get him through. Yeah. They didn't try. They just said, good job for living. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's just kind of been an epidemic now. It happens way more often. Oh, I think way more often now. Yeah, like they well, don't Well, that's even the have whole point of no child left behind. That you, right. if you make the basic, if you can just do this, you'll you'll go to. Was the that next. a Bush thing? No, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's wrong. I thought mm. it was Bush. Well, I have to Google. If you if you're listening and you know, please comment or send us an email. But I don't. That's one of those things that I have Maybe never. I don't I'm care wrong. who. I don't care who did it. I don't agree. Yeah, you know, just because I'm gonna have to Google right now. Are you now. gonna Google right this yeah, second? Yeah, it bothers me. Okay. What do you why don't you just say Siri? Was it a bush thing? She's been ignoring me lately. Siri has? Yeah. So it's the No Child Left Behind Act. Yeah, it's Bush. I knew it was Bush. Well, I knew he screwed up everything. I thought we liked Bush. Oh, uh, we I'm yeah, I don't know. I'm so confused. People are like, well, you know he sw- I sent you an, an invite today uh-huh. um, with this new app. I'm switching gears. Life 360. Is this one I can look at my phone now? Yes. Okay. Well, don't look at the picture. Um, but no, I sent you a, a text earlier today, and it was like, here, join my family. Did you even see it? I don't think I saw that. Okay, never mind. Look at the picture I sent you then, <laughs> and we'll talk about life. This Life 360, it tracks... Your family members. You know how I was trying to share my I didn't location? get a picture. That's the last thing you sent me was the article about me from Hollywood Reporter. Well, I hope that I sent it to someone. <laughs> oh, maybe I held off sending it to you because I was afraid you'd cheat. Okay. 
I'm sending you the picture. Okay. All right. Oh, that got clustery. We'll have to come back to Life 360. Because I want to talk about it. Okay. It's kind of cool, but then it freaks me out a little bit. Did you send that picture yet? Oh, yes. there it is. Okay. Goodness gracious. Yeah. What do you see in that picture? What do I see? Uh-huh. I see a combination of things. I see, what do you initially see? I saw lips initially. Okay. And, and then my eyes focused on the fact that it's trees. So, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. According to Wake Up Your Mind, if you see lips, apparently... You're more likely to be simple and quiet. Uh huh. You're someone who likes a non complicated life and you'll often go with the flow. But while you may sometimes be a bit naive, you're generally very wise and you value honesty. You are perceived as weak and need help, but in reality, it's not true. Okay. You have the power to solve the problems yourself without the help of others. If you see trees, if you see trees first, so you saw lips first. I saw lips first. Saw trees. Uh, trees. But yeah. if you were to see trees first, you're not the type of person to be pushed around. You worry about what people think of you, and those around you have a really uh, have to really earn your trust. You're strong and mysterious. If you see roots, people first. People who see roots first have the ability to recognize their mistakes and accept constructive criticism. They're independent, focused, and responsible. I thought that was really cool. I saw lips as well. Yeah, the first, well, it came in. It, I think it depends on the size. If, when I did this, the, when it's bigger, mm-hmm. I saw trees immediately. See? But when, you, when your picture first came in small, yeah. I saw lips. See, look at see to the difference mm-hmm. in the size of the. Mm-hmm. I, so it could be the, how you view the picture, too. Yeah. I just thought that was really cool. You have to share the picture when you post the podcast. Yeah, we'll put that on the, on the page. Now, what was the other thing, the 360? Life 360. So, it's this app my brother was using when I was there. And I joined his family on Life 360. And right now, it tells me that he and his wife are at home. And it lets them know I'm at home. Do you really want everybody to know where everybody is? You get to secure who sees your status. But remember, I was trying to share my location with you. And that was breaking. Mm-hmm. This is a way to share my location with you. Oh. So, but you don't have to be in the same family with my brother and I. Um, I try to create one with just you and my brother. Protect and connect your family, it says. Did you get it? No, I'm looking at the app store. I just oh. hit. Life360 is the world's leading real-time location-sharing app and is the best way to coordinate with family and friends. Get automatic notifications when your family comes and goes from home, work, and school, and when they complete drives. Wow, this that's a way to actually just spy on your kids, isn't it? It is. Yes. Is that bad? No. I mean, that's basically what this is could be done, to track or, track a lost or stolen phone, protect your family while they're driving from crash... Detection services. Yeah. See the last location for their their history. So if so something if happened missing, to person. Yes, if I go missing, mm. you could use this. Uh, speaking of going missing. What? Do you know about that, the girl in Utah that went missing? Do I think you, I did. Did they find the mattress or something? No, they were looking for the mattress because the okay. guy had thrown, like, put it out to be taken away. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they did arrest a guy today for... For murder? Yeah. Did they find a reason that... Yeah. They is there found, a podcast yet? Not yet, but they found her that was partially partially burned body in Ooh. the yard. That he like... Yeah. In his yard? Yeah. And the neighbors... I watched today. The neighbors were like... Oh, my gosh. I, I know this guy. I, I can say I don't think he has anything to do with it. Like they what? were talking about the guy that was arrested. Like I, he's the nicest guy. He's uh, one of the neighbors. Like I would bet my life that he had nothing to do with this. And you think I'm crazy for locking our doors? We're in a nice neighborhood. Yeah, he's nice. Partially burned body in his backyard. What? Isn't that? Isn't that one of those? You never know. You never know someone. Yeah. Well, now they're looking. What well, I was going to say? They did it all by uh, electronics. Like she had, your phone she is had constantly t- she, tracking. Yeah, them. and they they pinged his phone and her phone, and at the exact same time, and they were in the same same 
play, like they're doing all this kind of forensic stuff with with phones now. Yeah. So if you wanted to cr- do a murder, you got to leave your phone somewhere else. <laughs> That's what I've learned. If by you're going to kill somebody, do not take your phone. I've been listening to podcasts, and yeah, Google is constantly tracking you. It's harder on an iPhone, but yeah. Because as we've learned, I've tried to share my location with you and it breaks. But I want you to know where I'm at. Like, with you traveling, I want you to be able to pull up the thing and be like, Oh, okay, Janet's home. Oh, Janet's at work. Oh, why is Janet why in the middle of Why is Janet at Grizzly Rose on a Friday night? You would know where I'm at because I tell you, but why is Janet in the middle of Kansas? Someone's abducted her. Call the police. I see. I, I can- I'll be in Cheyenne. At the end of this month. Okay. Don't freak out. All right. Do you think I'm crazy by wanting you to know where I am at all no, times? No, but I think this goes back to the crime podcast. It I does. think it, this goes that back. That is exactly when that, like, I was like, I must share. Because there are, I, no one knows where I am when I'm not at work, when you're not home. People need to know where I am. I don't want to end up in a burn barrel in somebody's no, backyard. Like, bless my parents' heart. But I call them and... My mom's like, what are you doing? Going to Unicorn Festival? Okay. Like, <laughs> I think that just like, throws her off. Like, what? Okay. Does like, she even she ask you what a Unicorn Festival well, is? Well, if I were to go, tell okay. her, it's it's in Littleton, Colorado. She doesn't know anything about... Littleton, Colorado? Yeah. Or, yeah. You didn't try to explain it to her? Like, Oh, yeah. I parked in Columbine High School's parking lot. <laughs> there are things that might trigger things for her. Oh, yeah, that that thing. Oh, Columbine. I've heard of that. That's probably the only thing she would know about That's a state flower, isn't it? She would not know that. She would know that? No, she would think back to the school shooting. Oh, yeah. Anyone else? Did you not go there immediately? No. Oh, my gosh. When I pulled into the school parking lot, I was like, whoa. Yeah, I guess this should be the top. You lived here when that happened. I did. I was a senior in high school and went... Well, I was glued to the TV when that happened. I can imagine. I can imagine because they, they were doing it live from the you know all cops they outside. Have a, and, like a memorial now. Mm-hmm. I would like to go visit that maybe for your crime podcast. No, no, I, it's very sad, and it's just it's something that has. Sh- it was the first thing, first tragedy that really shifted us, and now it's way too common. Speaking of crime podcast, <laughs> yes, uh, good transition. Did you? I mentioned to you the other day about you. You should do that in your your podcast because both you and uh, talk about a murder. Yeah, have y'all? Did y'all discuss that? Like, no, we should pick a mur- our weekly our weekly murder story. Or oh, that takes a lot of research because you you represent something wrong. Uh-huh. People will come at you. I know. I don't want. I that. know that. That's what more and more. That's a more, lot more research than I have time for. I was talking to somebody else that does a podcast, uh-huh. and, and that exact thing came up with like sometimes I start to say something and then I don't because I'm not exactly sure, right. and I don't that's need I, I don't need the internet phone. to come down on me. Yeah, yeah. Because you should just be able to just talk and you know whatever. I'm pretty sure it was 73, and then people would be like, "No, it was 1971." You it need was, to check it, your facts. You check your facts before you talk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I. It's scary. People can be very trolly and mean. It's getting worse about that, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I think, uh, or you should just now when you talk say, um, "It was somewhere between 1950 and 1981." So it was somewhere in there, so you don't come down on me, you know. Right. It's yeah. That would be a very fun idea if I had some time to research. Just a just a little section of y'all's y'all's I, thing. We're yeah, just, we have like we have like wine on a dime. Mm-hmm. We have topics. What we're what listening are you listening to, to now? The feels of the week or positive poly moments. We could just put yeah. in a little crime. Yeah. So pl- plug yours before we go. Yeah, plug you your- can check us out at, at two girls and a bottle of wine dot podbean dot com. And we're on all the socials. And, yeah, it's two girls and a bottle of wine. Me and two of my girlfriends sit down each week. And right now we're really focused on The Bachelorette. Um, Big Brother just started, so we'll start talking about that. Um, But when Bachelor, Bachelorette's not on, we find a lot of other things to talk about. Yeah. Well, girl podcasts are pretty big. 
Are they? The, yeah, because there's not a lot of girl podcasts. Yeah, Grace Helbig's coming to Denver. Is One she, of my favorites. Is she going to record her podcast live? Or how's, I don't what, know. What, you just saw she's coming and went, yeah? Yeah. You don't know if she's no, telling a care. story or reading a book or she could probably reading, just read or, reading, a book to me. reading emails off her phone to she you? She could or, do that. <laughs> I would be like, oh. Grace Helbig's coming to town. I bought a ticket. Does she, does she have a band? Does she, have, she got a new no, album? No, she doesn't sing. Or what, no. but, you, but you see my point. You're like, I don't care what she's doing. I, I just, don't. I heard she's going to be in town. And I want to be in the front row. I didn't buy the VIP experience. I probably should have, but it was $100. Wow. Yes. That's, that's less than a cycle bar. That's a month. That's what Cycle I'm bar is a month, and that's three times a week. Okay. Don't. All right. Well, did I, you have fun, or did I, did. I did I ignore? Did I make you want to ignore a topic way too many times this time? No, I, I just want to take my horse down the old town road. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go find our trying stuff videos. We uh, we have an Instagram, right? We have an Insta. Does trying stuff? Yes, yeah, trying stuff has an Instagram. I I forgot a. I don't post to that like I should. Yeah, totally and you forgot. never gave me access, so I don't either. I don't even know if I remember the password. Oh my god! I need to. Yeah. Find okay. us on YouTube. Yeah, find us on YouTube. Trying stuff Facebook page definitely. Yeah, we, that's our Facebook. You didn't give me access to that either. I need to do that too. So, um, I don't know why I I create this stuff and then I I have gotten horrible at remembering passwords because you have a Notepad app. Right, but more and more things are like, what is your, I don't want to talk about past because it's going to slip, but but, <laughs> but they're like, you can't do this now. You've used this word before. You right. have to change. You need a character. You need a, a upper, lower, upper, number. Lower, number. And I've gotten don't like. Don't forget an emoji. Did I? Yeah. And now I'm like, I used to be able to use a lot of the same ones, which mm-hmm. I can't at all. I've changed all my, all. And they're even telling you now, this is, you haven't changed your password in 90 days. Please change your password. And then mm-hmm. I think, okay, I'm just using my phone, so I'll let I'll let the phone choose because your phone will say, "Do you want this this password like this X Y Z?" Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'll just hit that. And then I'll think, oh no, I need that while I'm on my. Oh, I've got it. What I forgot my password. <laughs> Passwords have just gotten it's ridiculous. It's good. It's keeping you safe, baby. That's what Life 360 app is for. <laughs> All right, we got to go. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.